There have been many stories from all over the world, about gnomes, goblins and trolls. But, what if these creatures are not a myth or folklore, what if they were real? Numerous people have claimed to have seen them over the years. One of the most disturbing stories involving a gnome happened in 1999, in the town of Porterville, California, to a woman named Tammy Thomas. Tammy moved there, with her three children, and onto a 100-acre farm that had a small farmhouse right on the Thule River. But soon after moving there, Tammy started feeling like something was watching her, and had an uneasy feeling every time she walked by the old barn, which was located near a isolated corner of the property. She also noticed most of the animals on the farm seemed to avoid the old building. She also observed that none of the neighbor's animals, strays, or wildlife would go near the old barn also. Whenever any animals passed the barn they would walk outwardly and swing wide, and on many occasions they would act strangely when they got near it, often staring at it, as if something were there staring back. The dogs would sometimes go crazy around the barn, barking and yipping, even though no one was there. Sometimes strange noises came from inside of the barn, which sounded like grunts, growls, and squeals. And soon, she noticed that a number of her ducks and chickens had disappeared, but couldn't figure out what happened to them. Tammy thought it was just her nerves, and maybe rats or wildlife were inside the barn, and though the missing animals might have just ran off or perhaps were killed by coyotes, but soon a frightening encounter would convince her that it was something more sinister. One evening, Tammy had just returned from town with her son and parked the car, but as she exited the vehicle and went to get the groceries out of the trunk, she said she saw movement out of the corner of her eye. When she looked up there was nothing there, and she went back to getting the groceries but almost immediately there was another movement, this time she also heard an insidious laugh. She would later say, this time I heard a very freaky, very evil sounding chuckle. I looked in the direction of the sound, and there standing about 50 yards from my son and I, was what I can only describe as a gnome. It was a creature about 3 feet tall, which had a beard, and was wearing baggy black pants, a gold-colored shirt, and a red pointy cap. For a moment it just stood there staring at her and her son, with deep, dead black eyes, as if studying them, but then things took a frightening turn. Tammy would later say, That thing grinned at us, with a creepy grin, spread from ear to ear, and its teeth were a gross brown and they were pointed. It had a bulbous nose, and large deep-set eyes, though I really couldn't tell the color of them. I never got a closer look at it and don't know if it was wearing shoes or not, because at that moment I dropped my groceries, grabbed my son, and ran for the house. Tammy quickly ran into the house, and slammed and locked the door behind her. She began hysterically telling her daughters what had happened. Somewhere outside the little man was still cackling, and there was a movement by the window. The terrified family looked out to see what it was, and as they approached the window, they could see the top of the red pointed cap come into view, which was extremely frightening because the window was located 8 feet over the ground. Tammy quickly closed the blinds, moved her children away from the window, and waited there frightened, until the thing finally went away. This would be the only direct sighting of the evil gnome, but Tammy would occasionally hear that same chuckling laugh coming from inside the barn. She would later say, after that night, whenever the dogs barked or howled, we were pretty sure we knew what they were barking at. We were also pretty sure of where our missing poultry had gone. From time to time we would hear a weird creepy chuckle, and other noises coming from that old barn. Tammy and her family decided to move away. Then in March of 2010, a family moved into the same house on the Thule River. According to Charlie, the wife, it was perfect for what their family needed. Her husband took a liking to a pond on the property, and decorated it with ceramic fairies, gnomes, and toadstools as yard ornaments, and stocked it with Japanese koi fish. Not surprisingly, Charlie and her family, also had an strange, and uncomfortable feeling about the old barn on the property, and tried to stay away from it as much as possible. Then one night, at around 3 am, Charlie and her husband were woken by what can only be described as a raspy, gurgling singing. Charlie and her husband looked out their bedroom window, and what they saw defied reality. Standing by the pond and holding one of the garden gnomes, was a creature that came out of a Grimm's fairy tale, as Charlie, would later describe it. 
The creature was two to three feet tall, wearing maroon pants and a baggy yellow shirt, with a brown vest over it and a dark waistcoat. It had a large gray beard, and was wearing a reddish-brown pointed hat. Charlie later said, the most horrible part of the creature were its eyes and teeth. When it grinned its teeth appeared to be jagged and pointed, and the eyes were small and beady, and had a dark, mean look to them. They believed the creature saw the couple looking at him, he then reached into the pond, and grabbed a koi and ate it. Furious, Charlie's husband pushed open the window, and yelled at the creature to leave the yard or he'd call the police. The creature laughed and then disappeared. The police were called, being notified that an intruder was on the property, but when they got there an hour later, the only evidence that was found, was small footprints, about the size of a child's, around the pond. This wasn't the only time the gnome would visit the pond. Night after night it would be seen, holding a yard ornament and eating a fish. The family eventually moved the ornaments, and put the fish into a tank inside the house. But this only angered the creature. When it appeared at the usual time of 3 a.m. When the gnome saw that the yard ornaments, and fish had been removed, it went into a crazed frenzy, and began screaming in a language that could not be understood. It began to run around the outside of the house screaming. The family felt safe until Charlie realized the dog door in the kitchen was unlocked, and feared the creature would try to enter the house through it. She was able to lock it, and then ran upstairs to close the rest of the windows. The last they heard of the creature was a very loud screeching sound, that was coming from below one of the living room windows. Charlie's husband went to investigate, and saw the top of the creature's hat underneath the window. The family decided to get out of the house, and leave the farm for good. Was this the same creature that Tammy saw a few years prior? Later through a website, the two women got in contact with each other. After exchanging information of their events. And confirming that both had lived on the same property. They agreed to meet, and revisit the property where their encounters had occurred. Upon arrival, they noticed the barn, the one that had given both of them a strange feeling had been torn down. But despite this, the property still had an unsettling feel to it. Before they left, they knocked on the front door of the house, to see if anyone was living there. A woman answered but was not happy to see them, and asked them to leave the premises after they asked about the barn, and if she had experienced anything unusual.